All right, guys, we're going to start lower extremities for the bones today. So we have the uh, coxal bone right here, which is actually three fused bones. So it's the ilium up top, which is the largest of the three. Anterior or on the front side, we have the pubis. And then on the back side, we have the ischium. Okay, so we'll start with the ilium and its structures. So we have, first of all, on the top of it is the iliac crest. The depression right here underneath the crest is the um, iliac fossa. Then if you were to like label this entire piece plus the entire back side of the ilium, that is the body of the ilium. Okay. Then we have this rough patch right here, which is the auricular surface of the ilium. Okay, that's where it attaches or articulates with the sacrum, which you have not learned yet, so you'll learn later. Then we have a bunch of little points, which are very lengthy, but when we break them down, you will not freak out, okay? So on the front side of the ilium, we have this anterior superior iliac spine. Below it, we have the anterior inferior iliac spine. So what are we doing? We're saying anterior, we're on the front. Superior, it's on top. Iliac, it's on the ilium. And spine, it's a little pointy process. So anterior superior iliac spine anterior inferior iliac spine just below it okay then we flip to the back side and how do I know I'm on the back side of the ilium you see this huge divot right there we'll talk about that in a second that's how I know I'm on the back side so on this we have the posterior superior iliac spine and then we have the posterior inferior iliac spine then below it you have this huge divot this is the greater sciatic notch then we start to touch the ischium, so this is the ischial spine, and then this tinier divot right there is the um, lesser sciatic notch, lesser sciatic notch. So now that we are on the back side, okay, we're talking mainly about the ischium. So this entire bulky piece right here is the body of the ischium on both sides. But you see this rough patch of the body back here? This is the ischial tuberosity, ischial tuberosity. Then the last piece of the ischium you need to know is as it's extending towards the front and it kind of cuts off where my finger is at, this is the ischial ramus, which is touching the inferior ramus of the pubis. Then where the pubis thickens, this is the body of the pubis. Then if you turn it right side up again and you slant it, you can kind of see this is the superior ramus of the pubis. So superior ramus of pubis, it thickens, body of pubis, then it's inferior ramus of pubis connecting to the ischial ramus. Then if you want to orient correctly, because I know that this is a left um, coxal bone, you stick your fingers in the greater sciatic notch and you call the obturator. So this is the obturator for ramen, obturator for ramen. Okay, and then the last term is this big depression right here where the femur articulates with this uh, with all three coxal bones. It's called the acetabulum or acetabulum. Okay. Okay, guys, so in this video we're going to cover the femur. Okay, so the femur is the longest bone in your body. It's in the upper leg. So we're going to start here at the proximal end that inserts into those coxal bones we talked about in the last video. So this big, large, round process right here is the femoral head or head of the femur. It has a little tiny indent in it, fovea capitis, super cool term. Then directly underneath the head of the femur, you have this piece right here that goes around. That is the neck of the femur, separating out the head from the rest. Then on the lateral side here, so the head of the femur is medial. Directly opposite or lateral is the greater trochanter, greater trochanter. More on the posterior side, you can see this little bump right here. This is the lesser trochanter. And while we're on the posterior side, okay, you see this line or ridge that runs down the back side of the bone? This is the linea aspera. So then we flip it back to the front side, okay? This is the distal end of the femur, okay? And we're going to use what we know to find what we don't know. So we look at the here. The head of the femur is medial, so I trace this down. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, and I flip it on the back side. You see these big round processes? These are condyles. So since this one's on the same side as the head, this is going to be the medial condyle. This one over here is going to be the lateral condyle. In between them is a little depression called the intercondylar fossa. 
and above them is this little flat surface known as the popliteal surface, which makes sense because popliteal means back of the knee region. And so if you flip it back over on the front side, the patella rests on top of the femur, so this is the patellar surface on the front. Okay, two more terms. So you have the um, epicondyles, which sit above the condyles in the femur. So once again, I'm going to look at the head of the femur, that's medial. I'm going to trace it down. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, this little bump right above the medial condyle is the medial epicondyle. Go back up. Okay, start tracing on the greater trochanter side or the lateral side. And you see this little bump right here, which is just above the condyle. This is the lateral epicondyle, and that's it. All right, guys, this is going to be a quick video on the patella or your kneecap. So I'm just going to teach you two things about the patella. It has two different regions, the base, which sits on the superior end of the patella, and the apex, which is the pointed inferior region right here. Also, a cool trick with the patella, if you see the bottom side, which has a little bit more of a curve, okay, if you face the apex away from you, if you face the apex away from you and you let it fall, so it fell to the left, that is a left patella. How cool is that? So that's it. Just to recap, base of patella at the top, apex of patella at the bottom, more pointed, and that's it. cover the tibia. So here's an isolated tibia right here. You can see it right there. Tibia. And so what does it look like articulated? So it looks like this. Okay. You can see the big toe is going to be medial side. And so if we're thinking medial, whoa, 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 whoa. If we're thinking medial side here, the tibia is the thicker lower leg bone and is also medial. Okay. And so the tibia will start at the proximal end. Okay, has this little bump in the front called the tibial tuberosity, tibial tuberosity, and then there's this little ridge that runs down the front side from the tibial tuberosity. It is known as the anterior margin, and it's basically a fancy way of saying your shin. Then I go down to the distal side, and you see this little piece coming out from the edge right there. That's the medial malleolus, and that is what you actually see when you look at your ankle. This is part of your ankle, medial malleolus. So since I know this is the medial side of the bone, I'm going to trace it up and be like, this is the medial condyle. This is the lateral condyle of the tibia. And then in between was the tibial tuberosity. On the top, there's this little mountain ridge looking structure. That is the intercondylar eminence. Okay? And that should be it. Guys, in this video, we're going to cover the fibula, which is your other lower leg bone. So articulated, it's this very skinny little bone, which is lateral or pinky toe side. So pinky toe side is lateral, following up this skinny little bone. So it, we're going to cover what it looks like articulated first, and then be able to tell what it looks like disarticulated. So on the proximal end, where it's articulating with the tibia, this is the head of the fibula, head of the fibula. Then if you run down the shaft of the fibula, shaft of the fibula, which is the main part of it, you'll get to the distal end down near the foot, and this is the lateral malleolus. Remember, the tibia had the medial malleolus. This is the lateral malleolus, the other part of your what looks like your ankle. So if we're looking at it disarticulated next to the articulated version, the head of the fibula has a little bit more bumps Okay, it's not as flat, so you look at the disarticulated version. Then when you look at the articulated end, you see the lateral malleolus is very flat. Okay, so then you take this one and you make sure that here's the head of the fibula, shaft of the fibula. Then you look at the lateral malleolus and it's very flat. Okay, and that should help. All right, guys, in this video, we're going to cover the um, bones of the foot or the tarsal bones along with the toes. So we're going to start off with your heel bone. So your heel bone in the back here is your calcaneus bone, calcaneus bone. Then if you look over the top, this is the trochlea of the talus bone. So the talus bone is what articulates with the 
tibia. So you can see the talus bone right there, right there, the talus bone right there, and it articulates with the tibia so it can rotate over the top of it. Then, on the lateral side, you have this cube-looking one known as the cuboid. Right in front of the talus, you have the this very horizontal one known as the navicular bone navigating the ship. And then these three bones at the distal end, which attach to the first three toes, are the medial cuneiform bone, intermediate cuneiform bone, and lateral cuneiform bone, or you can call them first, second, and third cuneiform bones because they're lined up with the first, second, and third toes. Next, you need to know these bones are connecting the tarsal bones to the toes. So these are going to be your metatarsals since they are in the foot. Metatarsals connect tarsals to the toes. So once again, we start with the big toe. Big toe is metatarsal 1, metatarsal 2, metatarsal 3, metatarsal 4, and metatarsal 5. We have the proximal and the distal phalanx of metatarsal 1, proximal, middle, and distal phalanx of metatarsal 2, proximal, middle, and distal phalanx of metatarsal 3, proximal, middle, and distal phalanx of metatarsal 4, and proximal, middle, and distal phalanx of metatarsal 5, or your pinky. Okay? And that should help you guys.